Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with letslearnthistogether.com, the best place to learn game design and development with Game Maker Studio 2. Check out my website today for the three course bundle to go from beginner to expert in no time. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a Game Maker camera with code. In the last video, we took a look at how to do it in the GUI without any code. Now we're going to do the opposite. So we're just going to do it in code without touching the GUI settings at all. We're going to completely override them. This is when cameras really start to open up and become much more useful in my opinion. You can now take what we're going to learn and make any kind of camera you want for your game. Every single setting that you can adjust in the GUI, you can also adjust through code, and you can adjust it in game as you're playing. So there is really an endless amount of possibilities that you can do with your camera. You can get it fixed exactly how you want, you can move it around on different objects, you can change the angle to go upside down, whatever you wanna do, once you understand how to create and modify cameras with code, the world is open to you. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so what we're gonna do now is tackle creating cameras purely inside of code. So I'm using the same project from the last video. I'm going to just make sure that viewports and the specific viewports are disabled. I'm gonna set the object following to none. The width here is still 640 by 360, so I'm just gonna change this to like 1000 by 1000 and change this to 100 by 100. That way when we enable this, the properties that we set in code are the ones for sure that are taking place. Otherwise, it's going to look very, very strange. Okay, first let's go into the manual, and I wanna do a quick overview of the functions that we have available. So we have the general camera functions, which we're gonna look at really quick, which are create, create view, camera destroy, and camera apply. So camera create is a very basic function which just makes a camera for you. You don't have anything built into it, there's no data about it, it's just a camera. And a very important thing to note is that a camera is a dynamic resource. What that means is when you're done with it, you need to use camera destroy. And if you're never done with it, that's okay, but you wanna make sure that if you create a camera, you never lose access to it. And it talks about that here, if you assign it to a global variable, then you'll always have access to it, which is totally fine, because you'll be able to use it, manipulate it, and destroy it when you're done. But if you create a camera and assign it to an instance or a local variable, when you move into a new room or destroy the object, just the object that it was on, that camera stays. So that camera will continue to use memory, even though you actually have no access to the camera you made. What that means is you get a memory leak which could crash your game. So as a general rule of thumb, when you make a camera, assign it to a global variable. That will just fix all of those issues right there. And when you're done with it, you use camera destroy. So we're gonna look more in depth at camera create view next because we're actually gonna use that. The, the other one here is just camera apply. And what this function does is it sets, takes all the settings that you've changed on the camera and just immediately applies them this frame. The other functions we're gonna look at take one frame in order to take effect after you use them, but this one is not. If you use it in the draw event, it will happen immediately, which is kind of cool. So those are the general functions there. Then you have the setters, which I'm not gonna go into in depth here, and the getters, which are basically the same thing, except you getting information. So these are all read-only functions, and these are ones that you write to. So we're gonna be using some of these in conjunction with camera create view, and I'm gonna show you that now. So let's go into the objects, and I'm gonna make a new one called OBJ camera. And an important thing to note here is that you really don't have to do this because you don't need a specific object for a camera. You can actually just make a camera inside of your player object, reference it with a global variable, and then apply changes anywhere you want. The reason I make a camera object is that it groups my code together. So if I have anything I wanna do with a camera, I know exactly where to go. But it is unnecessary. It is just a way of me staying organized. So I'm gonna add a create event. This is gonna be for our camera. And inside here, if you wanted to make a camera like we talked about, the first way is that, camera create. Of course, you need to actually assign it to a variable so I'll just say global.camera, 
equals this. Now we have a camera that we can do stuff with. But this way you can do, but you're gonna have to apply a lot of functions to it afterwards, and so it doesn't really make a lot of sense in most cases to do this. Instead, what I would do is do camera create view. And inside here, you can pass in all of the properties that have to do with this camera if you want. But you can also just pass in the necessary ones. So what I mean by that is you can look at the syntax here. So room X, Y, width, and height, these are all required. You must have those when you create a camera. But everything else here is in a bracket, and that means that it's an array, and it's actually an optional array. So when we make it, we can pass in four arguments, or we can pass in 10 arguments. If you do all 10, then most of your stuff is already set. But some of these things you might change over time, or you might only want to change one of them, so you're not going to take the time to go and you know, mess with all of them at once. So that's kind of a cool thing. Let's go ahead and create a camera here and see how that looks. I'm going to expand this here. So the room X is just going to start at zero. The room Y is going to start at zero, so it's going to be top left. Then the width here, I'm going to do 640 by 360. And I'm just going to stop it right there because I'm going to show you the rest of the functions that you can use to set this. But we have to assign this to a func to a variable first. So global.camera equals camera create view. So when we make our camera, then we can apply more settings to it with the camera functions. So camera underscore set. And I normally just type that and then I look through all the available functions because the names are pretty descriptive and are usually the way I find them. So view angle, you're probably not going to want to change much unless you actually want to flip your game and your camera completely upside down. I'll show you that later because it's kind of fun and you can mess with it, but for the most part your angle is just going to be the default angle. Now the border is pretty important because we talked about that before and the border is when does the camera move when the player moves? Can you get really close to the edges of the camera or does it want to keep it in the middle? So every time you use a function here, you have to pass in the camera you're using. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it right there. So that's the camera. Now the X border, I'm just going to put in the exact same things we have here. because so I want my character to be right in the middle. Then I'm going to do camera set. And this time I'm going to do the target. So paste in the camera we're using. And the target I want to do is OBJ player. And if you use this function, you can change it to any other target, which is pretty useful. So in the game, if you wanted to focus on another player or another NPC or something, you change which target is on, you might want to change the speed, and then the next frame, it'll start moving, which is really cool. The other thing we want to set is the speed. So I think it's just, uh, no, it's not just speed. It is camera set view speed. So global.camera. And the speed I'm going to give here is 4 and 4. So those are all the properties that we need of our camera itself. So that's fine. Now there's a few things you have to do besides just the camera though. If you remember in our room, viewports, we have to enable the viewport and we have to set this specific viewport to be visible. And then we're going to want to adjust the viewport properties as well. So here's a thing to note. You can set the viewport and stuff in the room you're in using the built-in properties, but not the functions themselves. And I'm going to show this to you later when we get a little more in-depth into it. I'm going to show you a good system for when you move into a new room that you just set that next room up. But for now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say view enabled is equal to true. So this is enabling the view that for the room that we are currently in. View visible, and we pass in whichever one we want, which is going to be zero. And we set that equal to true. Then we set the view camera with the function view set camera. The view we want to do is zero because that's what we're doing. And then we use global dot camera. And then we just place the camera in the room. If you forget to do that, none of this will work. So we'll run this, and now we should see our camera set up. So you can see that it's following us, and there we go. Now our 
game is a little distorted, as you can tell here, but that's okay. We can fix that by adjusting the actual viewport now. All of this is the camera itself, which adjusts what we see inside of our level. Now, we need to adjust the viewport. So down here, there are a couple of functions that you'll want to use in conjunction with themselves. So the first one is going to be window set size. And although this isn't a camera function, it is essential when you are using cameras because the cameras need to be aligned with the viewport you're using, and this is going to set the viewport. So what I'm going to do is do a width of 640 times 3 and 360 times 3 because that will give us 1920 by 1080. That's what we've set up here. So it looks like we're using these numbers quite a bit, and we are. And it makes a lot of sense to then come up here and actually set them as variables and possibly even macros, depending on if you're going to have multiple cameras in your game. Because if this is the resolution that you want for all of your cameras, like if you were doing a split screen project with multiple players, you'd want to know what size it should be. And you'd also want to know the scale that it's supposed to be at. So it would look something like this. So camera width would be 640, camera height of 360, and camera scale of 3. So you could come in here and replace these. So camera width and camera height and the camera scale. It makes your code look a little bit longer but now you can do cameras adjustment anywhere in your game because you know exactly what they're supposed to be, which is really, really cool. So we set the window size. If we do that, it will adjust our game. If we run it right now, we're gonna have a screen of 1920 by 1080. But you can kind of see that it's still messed up because the application surface, what we're actually drawing on the screen started pretty small and we didn't adjust that at all. So you can see that I can, there's a lot of empty space over here. So in conjunction with window set size, we also call surface resize. And the surface we're resizing is the application surface. And if you're not familiar with the application surface, don't worry about it too much. Just know that it is the primary surface that everything in your game gets drawn on. So if we change the window size, we have to resize this. So we just set it to the camera width times camera scale, and then the camera height times camera scale. Now, if we do it, everything will look much, much better. Okay, that's taking up the full size of what we want. Now, you may have noticed that our I, whenever we start the game, we actually have to drag this over and the reason for that is where we're actually creating the window is not in the top left corner of our monitor. Now, GameMaker actually has the ability to know the width and height of the monitor and the resolution being played, which is really cool. So what we can actually do is use those numbers to place our viewport, our window, in the top left corner perfectly where it is supposed to be. And to do that, we're gonna make a couple local variables so that the actual statement is a little bit easier to read. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm just gonna full screen this actually. So I'm going to say var window width equals our camera width times our camera scale. And the window height equals the camera height times camera scale. Now we're going to use the function window set position, and this function will actually just move it exactly where it's supposed to be. So if we want it in the top left corner, which I imagine you would so that the player doesn't have to actually move it around, then you, it will just do that for us. So I'm going to say display get width. And this is a function that just gets the width of whatever display is being used. We're going to divide that by 2 and then subtract it by our window width, which is also being divided by 2. So my monitor is 1920 
in the width. So I'm going to divide that by two and subtract it by whatever the window width that we're using, which is also going to be 1920 divided by two. So it's going to put it right in the middle. And for the height, we're going to do the same thing. So display get height divided by two minus window height divided by two. All right. If we run this, our window will now start in the top left corner exactly where it's supposed to be. So it actually fills up the screen perfectly now. And you can kind of see that down here is actually I can access the Game Maker tool right there. But for the most part, this is exactly the way you want it. Of course, once you do essentially full screen, you need to have a way of getting out of it. And I don't. So I'm going to quickly control alt delete this. Okay, now I'm out of there. So I'm going to quickly add in a event in the camera that allows me to escape from the game. So when I key pressed others escape game end, voila. Okay. So that allows you to set the viewport, move it where you want, and we can create a camera and set all of the properties that we want. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is just the other properties that you can set with camera create, just because you might actually want to do that. So I'm going to comment this. And if we say global dot camera equals camera create view, you should be pretty familiar with these now. So room X and room Y is zero, zero camera width, camera height. And then we have things like the angle. So the angle by default will be zero. The object we're following OBJ player, the X speed I'll set to four, the Y speed I'll set to four. And then we have the X and the Y border. So I'm just going to do camera width and camera height. So all of those are these three functions we just did and the angle. So I'm just going to comment all those out. And now if we run this, it'll actually work exactly the same. So you can see that the camera create view is super powerful because you can do it with just four arguments or you can pass in all of them if you wanted to do it then. Sometimes though, you're not going to have the object exist like the OBJ player. Sometimes you're creating the camera first before the player object. And so you can't do it this way, but this way is really nice. Just know that everything you do here can be set with specific functions as well, which is really handy. So this is everything you need to know to make a basic camera to be able to follow an object around and reset your viewport accordingly. This project will be available in the description down below, so feel free to grab it there. That's all I've got for you today, though. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more content from me, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. That way you are notified of all of my future tutorials, including the ones on this series where I continue to dissect the camera. If you're interested in learning more in Game Maker, check out my website at letslearnthistogether.com, where I have courses to take you from beginner to expert. Thank you so much for joining me, and as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today. 